The Game with Ryan Fowler. This morning I woke up and I grabbed my laptop. I usually roll out and I grab the laptop and I begin to write notes. And I thought about a couple different directions because I've been planning a few shows, but these shows are not like pressing that we have to do right now. In other words, they'll be relevant next week. They will be relevant two weeks from now. And it was just things that we were going to discuss, things that we were going to talk about. No more Auburn uh, championship ring. We'll let Auburn go back to the back of the burner like where they belong. And we look at the University of Alabama because today it's front and center and the college football if you can only imagine how big this story is Alabama and Notre Dame agreed to play a home and home series and that has been pushed back to the burner if you can only imagine think about that Alabama Notre Dame announces a home and home series and that will probably not be the number one or the number two conversation today on this program we will take phone calls early because I know that you're going to want to react most folks have already read it for those have not Let's cruise on over to thebleacherreport.com. I'll give you the title. If you think Jalen Hurts is just giving up on Bama, you clearly don't know him. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's pretty fair. I think everything that we've seen from Jalen Hurts, this guy's a fighter. This guy is durability. When he gets held to the ground, he generally fights. He gets up and whips you. That's what we've known from Jalen Hurts. And I've heard he's had a pretty solid spring. He's been inconsistent at times, but I think that's really who... We know of Jalen Hurts as the quarterback here. I mean, he'll make great plays, and then he'll make plays that maybe are not so good. So we open up the the conversation. This goes to Matt Hayes. Matt Hayes, I reached out to him. Matt Hayes is a veteran of this business. Been in the business forever, and I'll tell you up front, I believe him. I be, when, he, when he writes an article, this guy is, is not one of those guys that goes after clickbait. Matt's a great writer, great and I reached out to him, and he's actually in the air right now. He's not going to be able to join us, but hopefully we can reconnect with him maybe tomorrow because this conversation will probably carry us for many, many days. This is a story of J1 Hurts, but it also involves his father, which many of us know that he coaches there at Channel View High School. How do you say his – is it Av- Averian? Averian? Oh, uh, anyway, anyway, that Coach Hurts, how about that? How about that? J- Jalen's dad. Uh, Ovarian? Ovarian maybe is the way you say it. Ovarian. So Ovarian here, and if I've if I've said it incorrectly, I apologize. But uh, either way, it's his father. Marquise is looking at it like uh, I want to make sure I show this guy plenty of respect because I, I think his his comment is very very relevant, and uh, it's it's something we we no doubt want to talk about. So here we go. The article starts out like this. Maybe it's best to begin with a stone cold truth, and that's where we're going to start out today. A dose of reality from the most anticipated quarterback competition in all of college football. And people want to know, well, why do you keep talking about this? Well, this is the number one topic in college football. It's the number one topic in college football. We are a Tuscaloosa show. And if the number one topic in college football is Tua Tonga by Low and Jay what hurts, if I tuned into a sports radio station in Tuscaloosa, what do you think we'd be talking about? You think we're going to cover Texas A&M spring game or South Carolina women's basketball? No. We're going to talk about the number one topic in college football because it's happening, what, two and a half miles from where we are located here on Scotland Boulevard. I open up the conversation. Jalen Jalen Hurts is not changing positions, and there's a good chance if Alabama's record-breaking junior quarterback doesn't win the starting job while competing with national championship hero Tua Tonga-Vailoa, he's not hanging around Tuscaloosa in the fall to watch from the bench. That's the opening uh, two paragraphs. His father told Jalen, quote, I told Jalen, you effed up. You effed up. You you opened the door and you put yourself in this situation. He told Bleacher Report an exclusive interview in the hometown of Channel View, Texas, Hertz's hometown. Now it's up to you to dig yourself out. We go through the article, and it goes into the point here. The whole thing about, and this is another quote, uh, you, you go into the conversation, whether it's the wide receiver, the H-back. He's not going to play anything for quarterback. And he says, quote, Coach Ch- Saban's job is to do what's best for him. I have no problem with that. But my job is to do what's best for Jalen. And make no mistake, here, here's your punchline. Here it is. Jalen is a quarterback, and he wants to play quarterback. He loves Alabama, and he loves Coach Saban. And everything about that place. But he wants to play, and he will play. Then the question comes up. 
What if Jalen doesn't win the job? He is asked. This is Matt Hayes asking his father. He shakes his head slowly and, quote, well, he'd be the biggest free agent in college football history. Basically, if he doesn't win the job, not basically, that's what it is. What if Jalen doesn't win the job, he asks? He is asked. He shakes his head slowly, answers begrudgingly, well, he'd be the biggest free agent in college football history. Now, we'll stop there because there's more to it, but we're going to get to that as we travel throughout this afternoon. I've been covering Nick Saban since he got off the plane here in Tuscaloosa. I can never remember a father telling Nick Saban what to do. And not that he is telling him what to do, but I don't remember a father coming out in this public platform, giving quotes to an article, and what does this tell us? What does this tell us? When I think about this, not only are you painting Nick Saban in a corner, but you're also painting you and Jalen Hurts in a corner. Because if you say this, you're basically saying, we're going to transfer if Jalen Hurts is not the starting quarterback. He's going to leave here. He's going to leave. He loves Nick Saban. He loves Alabama. He loves you, the fans. Loves everybody, right? But he's going to get out of here. He would be the biggest free agent in the history of college football, right? And then we open it up and we look at two years of eligibility in the open market. You look at Nick Saban. It is a discussion that we thought about. What's going to happen? How's it going to happen? How is Nick Saban going to handle it? Well, I think they just painted Nick Saban in a corner. And you also just painted yourself into a corner. And what you said is, if Jalen Hurts is not the starting quarterback, then we're out of here. We're gone. Well, why would you say that if there's not something from that camp hearing that he's not the starting quarterback. Because Marquise Munson, will you call over at the football building? Nick Saban's going to be talking in a few hours. Tua Tonga Valoa is still hurt, right? I mean, Tua Tonga Valoa is still hurt. He's still got the heavily wrapped left hand, his throwing hand. So he's still hurt. So right now, Jalen Hurts is your starting quarterback. We've got a game. A day, spring game on Saturday, Jalen Hurts will roll out there with the first team. So why do you say this? Are they picking up things that maybe we're not seeing? Or maybe Nick Saban said something to them that gives them this indication? Because I went back and we played the Nick Saban audio clip from Saturday, and it was a buzz, it was a word, it was a couple things in there, and I played it for a reason. I think now I think you know why, because... I've been hearing this rumbling that the Hertz camp is is not as happy as what they should be. You can understand. I mean, I could sit here for the next three hours and probably make a case either way. I could probably drop a case why Jalen Hurts deserves the right to be the quarterback. But then I think we could sit here for the next three weeks and make a case why Tua Tonga Valoa deserves to be the quarterback. I get all the, the talking points. You don't have to repeat those today. I mean, as his father said, he said, I told you, Jalen, you effed up. You opened the door and you put yourself in this situation. Well, I think we stop right there. I mean, that's the comment that you you you, you look at in this Bleacher Report article by Matt Hayes. He messed up. And he allowed the door to be open, and Tua Tonga Valoa came off of the bench and allowed Alabama to come from behind and win a national title. Now, is Jalen Hurts going to take advantage of the opportunity that's been given to him this weekend? Only time will tell. We think so. We hope so. But it will, will it be so? Who knows? So we open up the topic of conversation, and we think about the biggest free agent in, in, in college football. I mean, here we go. I mean, this is a quote. This is a direct quote. This is not paraphrasing. Here we go. Well, He'd be the biggest free agent in college football history, end quote. I don't think so. Would there be a demand for Jalen Hurts? No doubt about it. Would he be the biggest free agent in college football history? I don't know if I'm willing to go there. I'm I'm not sure that, um, I mean, you tell me a place that you could say right now, we're talking about top 10 programs. Tell me a place right now that he could go in and beat that quarterback out. 
Is he going to go to Georgia and beat that guy out? Clemson? Ohio State? I mean, we could spend the time in the SEC. Uh, he, could, he could go to LSU, but that's not a top 10 program. I mean, he could go and win that job there. He's not going to beat out Jared Sidham at Auburn. I mean, we're talking about a guy that's going to have to go in and win those teammates over. And we're talking about a guy that's been consistently inconsistent. I mean, that to me, that's the track record of Jalen Hurts. It's consistently inconsistent. So we open up, really, it, it, it's a bad look. It's just a bad look when quarterback dads are unique. They have bigger quarter, bigger egos sometimes than even the quarterbacks have. Quarterback dads, they've invested a lot, and they want their kid to play. And if this was my son, I'd probably feel the same exact way. But I don't think you want to paint Nick Saban in a corner and say, hey, you're going to do this or we're going to leave. He said, Coach Saban's job is to do what's best for the team. I have no problem with that. My job is to do what's best for J1. And make no mistake, J1 is a quarterback, and he wants to play quarterback. He loves Alabama. He loves Coach Saban, everything about that place. But he wants to play, and he will play. I mean, we can stop right there. But then we continue, and there's more quotes. And we've we've had people, if somebody will help me, and I'm not talking about some guy out here that wrote a Heisman article about New York City. I'm not talking about that. But if somebody will find me a former quarterback or an NFL scout that does this for a living. I'm not talking about writing clickbait articles or uh, making Heisman predictions or New York predictions. I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about. But if somebody wants to find an expert, please, you don't even have to call in and talk with me. Talk, call, tell Marquise who it is. We'll reach out and we'll get them because we've yet to find anybody who believes that this guy can be a quarterback at the next level. But either way, that, that's not for, uh, for us to debate. I mean, obviously, we've had Matt Miller – uh, we played the audio from Mel Kuyper. I mean, everybody, Dan Shunka, Mike Dettelier, Chris Landry. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But if somebody can find somebody today that can thinks that Jalen Hurts can be an NFL quarterback, talk to me. Talk to me. S- send, a, send a DM to me. Find me on Facebook. Call in and tell Marquise, 205-342-9904. Leave him a number. We'll get in touch with the guy. We'll get him on tomorrow. We'll cancel everybody. We'll get this guy on because I've yet to find him. I mean, we asked Matt Miller a couple of weeks ago, which is, matter of fact, he's the lead analyst at the Bleacher Report. And Matt Miller said, I mean, he, he began to laugh at me when, when I told him. I said, you think that Jalen is a quarterback, future quarterback uh, in the NFL? Do you think he has that skill set? He said, not right now. He does not believe that he has. I think we have the Matt Miller uh, audio. When we play the Matt Miller, this is what Matt Miller said just a couple of weeks ago in this program. Just based on what I've seen through the last two years, he's going to have to switch positions. And and that's not to say he can't learn some things over the next two years, that his game can't change. But just where he's at right now, uh, I would actually think that would be pretty obvious. I would think Alabama fans would be all all on the, the tour train right now. Of this is the guy who might be you know, first round pick in a couple of years that he can, you know, live up to his, the expectation and the hype and how well he played in the second half of the national championship game. I, I think with Hurts, just, you know, whether it's a move to, you know, he's not really built like a receiver. So if it, is there a move to safety? Is there a move to running back? I mean, it's just, he's not the natural pastor. He just doesn't have the, the instincts and the accuracy that you expect from a, a quarterback. He said it right there. He said he does not have the instincts or the accuracy to be a passer at the next level. And I'm still not convinced that he can win the big game at the collegiate level, okay? Uh, Because we've seen him in the big stage. Now, when Alabama lines up against this schedule, I think a Jalen Hurts could get you through this schedule undefeated. But can he win a national title? I mean, I think we already know the answer to that. It took somebody else coming off of the bench to get the job done. Uh, When his father said all he ever wanted to do is play quarterback, He's not a tight end. He's not an H-back or anything else. He's a quarterback. Well, make him a quarterback. You know, my dad wanted me to be an astronaut, too, until I got my sixth-grade report card, and he goes, son, uh, you better look at radio. It's probably a little bit better place for you. I mean, dad wanted me to fly those rockets. We lived up in North Alabama. NASA's just a few miles down the road. But until I got my sixth-grade report card, and I realized that – you know, it probably wasn't going to be likely that I could make the grades to be an astronaut. I, I decided that radio was probably a better path, much easier path than being an astronaut. Marquise Munson, what is your, and, and maybe we'll get your take on the other side. 
But I, I know we've got tons of audio clips, but you kind of add all this together. Knowing Nick Saban and how he likes to get out in front of things, he's got tremendous foresight to see ahead. You kind of add all these things together and you end up with this article and it, it kind of it creates some some pretty major buzz. Your thoughts when, when you were reading the article, you want to talk about it on the other side? because Yeah, because we're, we're kind of pushed up against this break. We'll do that. And I'm going to take Greg and I'm going to take Red. I've got calls available. We don't even have a guest for the first hour and 15 minutes of program because this has been such a hot topic. If you're on Twitter, if you're on social networks, I mean, basically what we have is a father who's drawing the line in the sand and painting Nick Saban in the corner and said, hey, if you don't start my kid, I'm going to transfer. To my knowledge, I don't know if that's ever happened before. I don't even remember Lance Barnett doing it. He just did it. I mean, he just said, okay, hey, we're out of here. Later. Bye. But we have it with this situation, and Nick Saban talks at 530. We'll take your phone calls. We'll get you involved in the program. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm going to get Marquise's thoughts on the other side. And I've got another Jalen Hurts audio clip, but even worth going back to talk more about what Nick Saban said about Jalen Hurts this past weekend. A lot of these things are connecting the dots. And that's what we're going to do all afternoon. We, we knew better. We knew better when we saw the article. Marquise and I talked like 10 minutes after that, and we made the plans, and we said, hey, there, there's no need for uh, a lot of guests this afternoon. We've got a couple, but uh, not very many. Uh, we, we're gonna, I think we've got Nick Saban on hold here. Uh, Nick Saban even wants to react. I think we've got Nick Saban. Is Nick Saban ready? Hold on. Nick, let me ask you, Nick, uh, since I know you've got to go out on the practice field coming up in just a couple of seconds, let me ask you, have you had a chance to read the article on BleacherReport.com? If you think Jalen Hurts has just given up on Bama, you clearly don't know him, and he basically pretty much says, um, Jalen, you've messed up. You've opened the door for Tua Tonga Valo. You put yourself in that situation, and Jalen's going to transfer if you don't make him the starting quarterback. What do you think about that, Nick? Rat poison. What do you? What, one more time, Nick? Rat poison. Uh, Coach Saban, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say about that? Rat poison. Okay, thank you, Coach. We really appreciate the uh, insightful conversation. Will you have more to say at 5.30, Coach? Will you have more to say about uh, this story at 5.30 when you had a chance to let this marinate for a little bit? Rat poison. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate you. Greg, you're in the game. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, roll tide, Mark. Roll I'm tide. Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, hey, I'm, I'm Ryan. I, Martin's my buddy, though. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, hey, but uh, I'll say about Martin. I remember coming in. He was going to have a good conversation, though, about this right now. Okay. But, well, you, you can, are you going to have an early conversation with us, or you want to say that yeah, for Martin? Yeah. Yeah, I want to have an early one. But see, come in, Martin, we've been waiting on Jada uh, Fowler to say something. Ever since last, last, the last spring, back, you know. So I'm glad to see the man do care about his son, you know, uh, uh, future, you know, cause, you know, we dog uh, Jada out, you know. It started, it started way last year. We, we dogged him out, you know. I'm just glad his father recognized, uh, and spoke out. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be no big deal. Y'all say he ain't no quarterback. You know, your lips are, uh, uh, call him everything except the child of God. So, what the big deal is? Oh, hold on. Rewind that for about 10 seconds. They've called him everything, but the what now? But the son of God. Oh, but the know? son of God. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you entertained it all last year. So, if they don't that that, that's fine. He, he's not going at this stage. You ain't shooting no bad thing at this day. I don't, I, I'm just glad to see the man say something to take up for his child, you know. Well, opinion. sure. No, no, Greg, you expect that. Sure I do. Yeah, so. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd have probably said thing. the same thing. Yeah, even you said, you know, Jim didn't have a, a chance in the world to be, to be a cover a level out. Your listener said that, so it shouldn't be no big deal. You know, me and Martin one said the child wasn't ready. You know, but y'all, y'all keep on working them right now. So hold you on, hold on. Up. I want to make sure I got my talking points ready. You said the okay, child, so, the child. For a minute, minute, he 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 he, he, he got his shirt on. You know, down there, David said, uh, "Father said, for thirty minutes, uh, the young man showed up and showed out." But David been doing this for a while. You know. 
But but Greg, it, it was the biggest stage in all of college football. I mean, I mean, yes, sir. In, in, yes, Tus- sir. in Tuscaloosa, we defined you one way of being successful, and that's to win a national title. But even you said you remember them days when we watched it, huh? You know what? Well, I, I well no, no, what... You're, you're right. I have said that we went through those rough days, but we yeah. have Nick Saban. I don't expect yeah. a six yeah. and six season or oh, or, or nine and three yeah. or whatever. Yeah. See. You, you know, I understand. I really do. I, I understand, you know, the, the, uh, what's going on, you know, how you hype up your listeners and things. But see, the big picture is, you know, Nick ready for this. Long as Nick can do what uh, I think he's going to do with that uh, quarterback, I mean, that coaching uh, quarterback he got here, watching the quarterback, and he can find Jada, and Jada Father can see that. That ain't going nowhere. Now, that's showing Daniel Daddy that he got interest to embell his son the best way he know how. That means he got a coach that really working on. Okay, so so take. so Greg, so, you you are in favor of what is of, of what yeah. Jalen's dad said, right? Yeah, yeah, I can have to. Okay, him. okay. It, it, it's chocolate and chess. His what now? It, 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 it's not chocolate and chess. Y'all been criticized, Daniel. Chocolate. Make him move. Yeah, you know, y'all been making a move on Jalen ever since last, last year. So he his father said, this year, that, he, he just spoke. He made a move back. He I got you. Out. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Well, so he's, he's, he's not transferring move. yet. He, he's only going to transfer if he doesn't win the starting quarterback job. Well, I He's still here. That. He'll but be here see, this afternoon. But see, I had to go out and take, take that cup away from me because I really do. I really do want Jalen to transfer. Okay. So, will, so why, why do you, why do you want him to transfer, Greg? I said go back uh, two years ago. I know, and, uh, Greg. Greg, why do you why do you oh, want okay, Jalen? Hey, slow down. Okay. Why do you want Jalen to transfer? Go back two years. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the information. Okay. Go back two years and listen to your show all the way up to now, and, and, and listen at the fan base. I told you doing that. Go back. So hold on, hold on, Greg. I want to make sure you ask me a question, right? You ask me a question, right? I just want to make sure we understand you correctly. You said the reason you want Jalen to transfer is because something we said two years ago on the show. Yeah, Edison, two years. Edison, that kid, and and Alabama. Y'all been putting that boy down. Y'all been putting him down. I've been waiting on his dad to say something about this a long time ago. Okay. That's why I take my hat out to him. But now. What you said, uh, 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 most of are cute, but I'm, I'm, I'm like Mark. Sometimes it don't take all that, you know. Oh, so you, so you so, make, so most of it's me. Huh? Most of it's me. Man, everybody that 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 that, that know how Jalen been been attacked, they been really attacked, and and what really got up on them, it it it, it really wasn't you. It was the whole summer. Half of Alabama Nation. Okay. That, that, that okay. So but but being the voice of the Alabama Nation, I guess we're we're at fault. And, and you know what, Greg, we'll take that responsibility. Uh, right. Thank you. Please, 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 you a man up there. Well, I'll hold up your thing. I have said. Thank you. That, you know, gotcha. And I know Jalen Father do the same thing. You know, you can't fault no man. You know, they're looking for the best interest for his child. You're right. Like, like, no, like, I, 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 I never did blame him, but I don't think you should paint right. Nick Saban in the corner and say if oh, he's not okay. the starter. Now, now, I, now, now here go check. Now, here go by check. Now, this year, ain't Nick got a coach just pulling for the quarterback, right? So, when David Fowler comes to today, I mean, Nick Saban, he's going to break down everything Jalen been doing and show him how he's been, been doing. I take my hit. We got the uh, uh, fighting coach. In, in, in history, you say that. You know what I'm saying? We, we do have the best coach, and and yeah. I have faith that he'll play the best one. Hey, Greg, I, yeah. I'll let you have the final thoughts, but I gotta go to I gotta go to my next call. But uh, I do appreciate uh, the amazing insight uh, that you've been able to provide. Okay, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for. I've been waiting to have this debate with you. Y'all shut Martin up. Y'all call me when when Tuka fell over, her head fall. Y'all call that man. Everything except Cal God. So I've been waiting to get back on. I got Thanks. you. I got you. Thanks, Greg. Man, Greg's fired up. Greg's fired up. Let's go to Josh. Josh, good afternoon. You're in the game. 
What's going on, Ryan? Uh, I'm I'm sure I'm still trying to chew on everything that Greg said, but it'll take me a few minutes. Well, I don't. I, I didn't understand half of what he said, but uh, <laughs> I, I did hear that it was uh, something we said two years ago. Is 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 the majority of it? But uh, either way, I, he was. I heard that, and son of God, but uh, just I mean, I, I do understand what the dad. I mean, was trying to do. I mean, he is looking out for his kids. I mean, but really, the best free agent ever. Uh, I, I want to make sure I've got this correct. Uh, he would be the best free agent in college football history. Uh, well, I mean, he wouldn't even be the best free agent uh, technically. Free no, no, agent he, he would be the biggest free agent biggest, uh, in college football history. I mean, Shea Patterson was better. I mean, would technically was I would say was better than Jalen Hurts this year. I mean, not not to knock Jalen that bad, but. What kills me about all of this, I mean, it's just going to put a divide in the team, I think. Uh, I mean, you even, you've seen a little bit of it, frustration last year on the field in the wide receivers, especially with Calvin. Uh, when some of them passes that should have been made, wasn't made. I'm uh, I'm hearing it's still happening. By the way, I don't know right. if that means anything. If it take it or leave it, I mean, and just uh, and I just think uh, Calvin right now is draft stock. You know, he was projected as a top ten pick. You know, he's sitting down at about seventeen right now. So, if Tua would have started last year, he might have been a top ten pick, possibly. I mean. Just saying, and it's Tua just opens up the offense that much more. Well, and, I thought I thought Vinny Sensuri said it best. He said he used the entire field. Jalen uses a quarter of the field. Yes, exactly, and it opens up the running game. Uh, opens up everything. I mean, it's not that difficult. For, I mean, anybody to see and. And another thing, and this goes back to everybody that's ever tra- – I mean, everybody – I mean, every quarterback that has transferred from Alabama, how much success do they have? Not had, much. Not much. <laughs> going back, I think going back to Philip Sims, I think that was the first five-star that transferred. Yeah, Chesapeake Bay, Virginia. Yeah. Uh, and really never heard of – nothing from any Well, I think Nick Saban does a good job, and, and, and I know the quarterbacks – Quarterback dads egos are it's hard to even measure to be honest with you they uh they they even you know because you know they believe in their kid and obviously there's one quarterback that will play and there's one that will not play uh and and I think when you look at him I think most people would have defended uh Jay the way that his father did I mean I think most people would have defended that their kid the same way but I I still don't know if you come out and you sort of paint yourself in a corner because uh, like, he did it the wrong way. I mean, you defend him, but do it, uh, he should have did it in a different way is what I think he should. I mean, defend him, but do it in a different way. I mean, don't say he's leaving and, do you know, all that other sure. extra stuff. But, I mean, he could have did it in a different way is what I, I mean, right. I would say. Yeah. But it's... Uh, I did, I, like I said, I just think it's going to cause a more divide in the locker room. Than I don't. Anything. I don't think it will. I don't think it will. Uh, I think this will probably be a galvanizing moment. I don't think it'll. I don't think it'll cause divide. I really don't. Josh, thank you again. Anything else, sir? No, I appreciate it, Ryan. Roll tight, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you for your phone call. Let's go to Red. Red. Good afternoon. You're in the game. Good afternoon, Ryan. Just bear with me because this is going to be like a call from Tony. I'm going to get my point across. Go for it. All right. This article just sparked my ass right here. Jalen's daddy needs to look in the daggum mirror. It's daddy that effed up, not Jalen. That man went and put so much high expectation on his son. He goes out there and he's doing everything he can, but it's not up to daddy's expectation. And daddy... It's obvious has not been at the dad gone practice watching his son work his butt off, giving everything he can to get his job back. 
And Jalen is not upset. Jalen, if he's not back there at quarterback, he's laughing, joking around with all the players. His head ain't down low. He's not pouting or nothing. This kid is giving all he's got. And that's some things, Ryan, I don't care how many quarterback camps you go to, how many trainers you go to, there's certain things that you just cannot change. And Daddy has got to realize that. Daddy needs to think about his son and not himself. That's a great way to look at it. I really didn't look at it that way, but uh, you, you could see they were that. Uh, could be a very strong possibility. I mean, it, you know, I, I feel sorry for Jalen. It, it, it's almost like his daddy's throwing him under the bus because he's out there. He's having fun. He knows he's not the starter right now. He knows he's dang number two, no, without a doubt. And his dad ought to be uh, promoting him instead of trying to bring him down like well, if he ain't the starting quarterback, he's going to be leaving. Uh, Daddy needs to leave the ball alone. He's over 18 years old. He's a young man. Let him make the decisions and not Daddy. That's a great way to look at it, Red. I, I, I appreciate you bringing that perspective uh, to the table because it's uh... – this may be the case of dad just getting involved, and uh, you know, dads are going to defend their kids, right? But I right, go back to when you were eighteen and nineteen, you, and you're around doing something. You you didn't want your daddy getting involved, did you? No, not at all. It would embarrass you, wouldn't it? It would, yeah, sure. And all right, and look, this is gone nationwide. How do you think Jalen feels about oh, this? Oh, it's it, it, it's a complete meltdown. You're 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 great point. And they, Daddy needs to keep a damn nose to his own business there and leave his son alone. Like I said, I was one of the biggest critics of Jalen Hurst ever. But when I've done the up close test, the crimson glasses off, the boy's a heck of a quarterback. This is Alabama now. This is not some other school where just any quarterback can be number one. To be number two quarterback at Alabama is one thing to be proud of, right there. Great point. No, I, I think it's a very, it's a very fair perspective, Red. All right, Brian. I don't want to get somebody else in. It just man, it just burned my butt up. So you're more <laughs> mad at Dad than you are Jalen. Which I mean, it, it, in truthful, uh, this is not Jalen talking. Uh, exactly. This it's is daddy, this is his father. Who get up for a grown man? He needs to leave the ball alone with a young man alone. He, he's the one making his decision. This is life. It ain't daddy's life from here on out. Nick Saban is trying this guy to be an athlete as fast as he can, to be a good man away from football, to be successful in life. Daddy needs to just sit back and thank Coach Saban for what he is doing for his son. Got it. Thank you, Red. All right, bro. Remember this. We are the Crimson Tide. 18 bound with two, and we still got Jalen roll time. Hey, thank you, Red. We appreciate that phone call. We've got one line available right now, and a lot of people have been asking for lines available. We've cleared those phone lines. 205-342-9904. 205-342-9904. Let's go to Chris. Chris in Mississippi. Good afternoon. You're in the game. Good afternoon, Brother Ryan. Roll time, buddy. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm just trying to, trying to chew on what Red said, and I think he's got a very valid argument. Well, I, I was I was talking to Marquise. I, I missed most of what he said, but I he said uh, he said his dad's painting him in a in a bad light. That uh, dad should go away and shut up. Yeah, well, I'm I'm yeah, I I, I, I kind of subscribe to that think thought process myself. Uh, I'm gonna try to speak to my points here, not meander too much yet, because I know you got a lot of people want to talk okay. about this. Yep, I've got some here. here I got first. I'm gonna start with the question. And I'm just I'm gonna pose this to you and see what you think. And I asked this to Marquise. <clears throat> I know that uh, Mr. Hurt, Coach Hurst went uh, made this statement to the media. Uh, I, I don't know when it actually when it took place. If, you know, a day or two ago or whenever it was, but uh, it got reported today. Do you think this is the first time that uh, Coach Saban has been presented with this uh, issue or heard about it? Or do you? I mean, with, with, with that, just Jalen? Well, no, from his dad, from his dad, uh, making the you know, making the claim or making the statement that Jalen don't start. 
uh, that he's going to transfer. Because I have a hard okay, time I'm, believing I'm, let, let me there's just, not been pressure up there before. Okay, let me just give you, and, and this is Ryan's opinion, which is about worth what you paid for it, not much, okay? Okay. Uh, and this is just an absolute guess. I'm going to say this is not the first time. Okay. So, and, and I, I expect, I, and, and yeah, exactly, because I don't think this reporter or whoever it was went to this went to this man and, you know, provoked him and pushed him into making a statement like that. So, it, of course, it's going to get a lot of hits and a lot of reads. And, you know, the reporter, he said, is respectable. And I believe that. So, obviously, the train of thought was already there. So, this has got to be a contingency there that, that uh, Coach Saban has already taken into consideration. So, it, it'll probably be a really good press conference today. I can't wait to hear, hear how it's addressed openly. It's got the making and the chemical makeup to be a – uh, you know, a, a classic spring rant here if it goes too awry there with the press media. So I'm looking forward to hearing that. And here's here's my my, my second, my last statement. This is my concern. I'm not I'm not going to turn this into a Jalen versus two. I know this is probably going to turn into people piling on Jalen over what his daddy said today, and we're going to try to disqualify you know anything uh, Jalen's accomplishments or his abilities. A lot of the show. I know a lot of callers will call in probably they don't usually call this kind of this stuff gets interest on, but. Here's my concern is, and what we see with, with Tua, I, 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 I'm not concerned with Tua's talent. I'm more concerned with Tua's durability type issues that we've had in uh, two broke bones in spring practice. Say Tua gets the starting job uh, against Louisville, goes back to make a pass, and his hand hits a face mask of a Louisville player and re smashes his hand again. Well, now we're down to Mac Jones. <laughs> You, you get where I'm going well, here. For I, rest, I think that's for the why. Rest of the, for, for I think the rest that's of the season. I think that's that makes why. Me very nervous. Sure, I think it would make anybody nervous, uh, Chris. Yeah. I, I think that's why you look at Garner Minshew was the possibility that Nick Saban went out and got a got a you know insurance policy, and now that policy has been canceled. That he'll head to Washington State. I I said it when I first saw that Garner Minshew was committed to Alabama. I said Nick Saban is going out and getting a policy just in case one of these guys decides to transfer. And now we're in a situation where you've got a dad who has said, if you do not play my son as a starting quarterback, we're out of here. Yeah. And see, the, the one thing that you got to look at, okay, let, let's just paint this scenario, and this is just based on what he's told us, right? All right, let's just, let's just paint it right here. So let's say that, Tua has declared the starting quarterback going into the Louisville game. With that point, Jalen has to make a quick decision because if he stays around, he's got to go to Nick Saban and say, Coach, I don't want to be the backup. I want you to redshirt me, and then I'll have two years of eligibility because he'd graduate in December. But if he graduates, he has an eligibility. He can transfer in immediately. But if he plays – he only have one year of eligibility left. So, right. in other words, if you're Jalen, just reading into what the article says, if Tua gets the job, then I, I would probably look for Jalen to transfer immediately because if he hangs around, you kind of take the risk that you're going to play a few snaps and you're going to waste a complete year of eligibility. Does that make any sense? It makes, it makes crystal clear sense. Yeah, so... <laughs> I mean, and I'm only just reading into the article. I, I don't have it talked to yeah. Jalen. And Jalen has been uh, taken away from the media. We have not spoken to Jalen this spring. Right. Well, I'm nervous about it. Like I said, I we got a coach. That's like, a, and the only thing that gives me just a little bit of comfort about this is that I'm sure, Coach, this is something he's taking in consideration. I don't know what he's going to do. Like, see, we're, if Jalen goes, we're two snaps away from open tryouts. Me and you trying out for quarterback, Ryan, and that. I don't like our chances at number 18 with those kind of odds. But uh, anyway, I appreciate you letting me on here. I, well, I look forward to hey, Chris, it. is yeah. there any chance, and I'm just painting out hypotheticals and I'm just trying to talk to smart people uh, this afternoon, is there any chance that Nick Saban knows that and that's why he's going to go with extra protection to protect Tua Tonga Valoa? It, it, it's, it's a possibility. It, it like is a possibility. I, I just don't think, I don't think Coach Saban is going to be caught off guard by this. I, I think – I think this has probably been this, – this, this might have even been an issue last year. I, I, you know, you hear Romans and you hear Talkins and you always know about these, these quarterback parents and all. They're real – got a lot invested in those kids. 
and uh, well, but 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 Chris, I tell you what really ticks me off, and I'm sorry, I'm losing it here. It yeah. Is when you think about Nick Saban, how patient Nick Saban has been with Jalen Hurts. Because if it would have, if I would have been the head coach, I'd have pulled him a long time ago. I wouldn't have waited to Georgia. I'd have pulled. Well, I'd have put his butt on the bench uh, many, many games ago. Well, but, that, that, and, that, that, I mean, that makes you wonder: is that is that could it, some of that be possibly related to uh, parental type pressure too? I don't. I'm not going to say coach is going to buy parental pressure, but you know, coach goes in these guys' living rooms and tells these parents that he's going to take care of their kid and he's going to look out for their best interest. Sure. You know, you take that to a point to where, you know, if the kid's winning ball games and he's not losing, it might not be the way the fans want it, but coach is going to live up to what he tells. I believe he's going to live up to what he tells them parents. He's going to give that give, give that uh, person's kid every opportunity and every chance uh, to play the position he recruited him there to come to do. So it, it, it's it's just a situation there, man. But uh, Great point. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Fun to, it's going to be fun Saturday. Can't hey, wait. Hey, fun, we'll fun, fun, yeah, fun Saturday. It's going to be fun. Now, thank you, Chris. It's going to be fun at 530 when Nick Saban stands at that podium because you know he's going to be asked about this question. He will be asked about this question. Biscuit Bruce, hold through the break. I'm going to take you on the other side. I want to pin you up against the break. Uh, other calls. we got a couple lines available here. 205 205- 342-9904, right here on the game in T-Town on Tide 1029. Even the Alabama Broadcasters Association knows who has the best sports show in all of Alabama. The Game with Ryan Fowler. Only on Tide 1029 and 100.9. And the all-new Tide 1029 app. We'll go into a lot of different conversations today. Certainly the story around Bleacher Report, around J1 Hertz. And I'll read you the, the quote a little bit here. Uh... His father telling Jalen, he says, quote, I told Jalen, you effed up. You opened the door and you put yourself in this situation. The article goes on to say that uh, if Jalen Hurts is not the quarterback, then uh, he's going to be the biggest free agent in the history of college football. Biscuit Bruce, good afternoon. You're in the game. Always great to be on 102.9, 100.9, and 102.9. 102.9 to out. The game with multi sport talk show host Ryan, the man Fowler. It's good to have you. Thank you for calling in, Biscuit Bruce. What do you think? What do you, What's your thoughts? Well, I want to revert back to one of your guests yesterday, if I can, for just a minute. And that would be John Sisson on the Rise program. And I just want to say that for those of y'all that don't, John and, and Sirius Sisson are two of the finest people, in the, and they do a lot for our community and all that. Are just great people, and I'm gonna give you one little piece of advice there, Ryan. Don't, don't play John Sisson in golf. Is he that good? <laughs> He's that good. He's a good one. So, well, now it, it, don't, he didn't. Don't, don't, let, he him, did don't not, let him roll in, break right in there, and, and, and uh, set you up. <laughs> he did not <laughs> tell me this. He did not tell me this. Okay, but right. I believe that uh, is it. That Nick Saban's golfing buddy, him and Stephen Rumsey. That that is, you are correct. Sir. Okay, and he, John That's, did not tell me that he didn't. I mean, I don't think he ever mentioned anything. But I, I knowing a little bit about this community, I think. Uh, uh, I wonder if he takes yeah. a few dollars from Nick Saban every now and then. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. Now I'm not going that far, but I know John Sisson is, is a great individual. His wife, I've been knowing their family for years and years, and uh, they are, they do a like, ton for this community for the Rise program and. Uh, they just very involved in our community and two fine people and one great golfer. So don't play him heads up. Gotcha. Invite, Thank, invite thanks me, that, and you'll take him two more one. Th- thanks for that advice. I mean, the only way I would take him <laughs> up is if we went out to the, the driving range and we played that electronic golf up in Birmingham or something. I, <laughs> Cop golf. Yeah, I've that's, never that's, been there. I want to go, though. Man, that is a blast. You'll love it, man. Okay. It it is really uh my grandson has been up and I've been up there, my wife went, she's not really a golfer, but uh she had she had a blast. Good. Oh. Good because I, I know uh, I, I know I wouldn't have to chase and get rattlesnake bit with uh, trying to find my balls. So <laughs> <laughs> now you're not gonna hit it out of their cage. <laughs> yeah. It's uh I don't know. I mean I might be the only guy that could ever do that. Uh nope. that that would knock it out of that cage because, man I you know, my ball, I aim here, and it goes there. But uh, anyway. Yeah, well, I got, I got one of that, too, but you will not hit it out of that net. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Well, good. Good. All right. What do you but, think? What do you think about this um, Jalen Hurts story that's developed out of the Bleacher Report? Well, I, I want to follow on one of your your previous callers. Who, first of all, he is too is a child of God. We're all child children of God. So, uh, if we say he's a child of God, that's because he is a child of God. He believes he's a child of God because he's a true believer in Christ. So, that statement was was pretty ignorant, along with the rest of them that he made. What you could understand when he wasn't talking too fast, you couldn't understand what he was saying. But, but let me say this: uh, you know, uh, we have been talking about him for two years because he's been the starting quarterback at Alabama for two years. In the whole two years that he's been there, in every I, I have not heard one, not one, NFL analyst or NFL preceding quarterback that played in the NFL for years and years and years, and quarterback coaches, I have not heard one other than his father, who happens to be a, a coach in the state of Texas, a high school coach, say that he could play NFL. He would never be even close, not even in the ballpark of being the most valuable free agent in this country. There, there's, you named, you said top 10 a while ago. Name me one university that he, that he could go and play quarterback at and win the national championship. He's played two years at the greatest dynasty College surrounded by the greatest players the on the roster. roster. Yeah, but surrounded by the greatest players on the roster. Yeah, I mean, it's... In the, in the country. The greatest team in the country at, at this time, the, the greatest dynasty in NCAA history. And he hasn't won a national championship with either, either, either year. So, uh, first of all, what his dad said was, his dad should have kept his mouth shut in my opinion, because now he just added extra pressure on everything. He's starting out like the ball day. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do with my son or he ain't going to play for you. Well, guess what? You know, he pretty much said to, uh, you know, you don't back not only yourself in a corner or you certainly don't back a man of stature like Nick Saban in a corner. Because Nick he don't care who you are, Mr. Hurts. He don't care that you coach high school football in the state of Texas. You know why? Because he wins national championships at the University of Alabama. And if your child's not the best man for the job, then guess what? He's not going to play, whether he transfers or not. So, you know, the way I look at it is this, and, and you know, my competitive nature in sports and even in today, the, the sports that I still participate in, I don't want anybody to give me anything. I don't want my name to give me anything, and it certainly would because my name is nothing. But if I'm going out there and playing heads up against somebody in golf or basketball or whatever, I don't want you to give me anything. Now, if I beat you, I'm going to earn it. I want to earn it. But I don't want you to give me anything because my dad come in and said, well, here's the deal. If he don't start, he's transferring. You know what? Sayonara. In May, take him somewhere else and, and let's see how good a, he, a quarterback he can be when he's got average to below average front offensive lineman blocking for him. When he ain't got a, uh, a mastermind offensive coordinator calling the plays for him, after they break the huddle, let's see how good Jalen Hurts really is. L Lane Kiffin needs a quarterback in 2018. Well, that would be his only option because he's the one that made him. Lane Kiffin made Jalen Hurts look a lot better than Jalen Hurts is because Jalen Hurts went out there, they broke the line of scrimmage, and that's the very reason we had so many delay of game penalties is because we broke when the defense set up, Lane Kiffin called the play and called it in. And then Jalen Hurts called the play. I mean, it's, if you look at the football games, the, the real games, not the games when he, he can score five touchdowns against La Tech or somebody else, the games that he had to compete in to win and, and look at who's calling the play. Look where he looked with 11 seconds to go on the, on the 
time clock, on the, on the play clock. He's looking straight at Lane Kiffin for the play. You know, he, he, he can't see the whole field, and, and it, it's, it's been obvious. And it ain't just been I saying it. Look, if, if you can't fly, if, you're not, if you don't have the capability to fly, if you jump off a building, you're going down. So us saying this, it's, it's not just the, the people that, that talk about it, that see, that have probably played the game. I don't know where this, this guy that called in doesn't play football, and it doesn't really matter. It's obvious that he can't analyze football. Because he's in a dream world. I mean, it's like you have the finest people that ever play the game of football telling you he he is not ever going to be. So you got to listen to me. I mean, I don't understand it. He, he will never play quarterback in the NFL. Got it. Period. That ain't just Bishop Bruce saying it. That's every quarterback analyst in the country saying it. Sure. After watching him for two years. Well, we're we're still trying. Uh, we've been on a mission to try to find that uh, person that can tell us the uh, opposite side of that. If if you find him, uh, let them know that we're looking for him. We don't know who it is. You won't but, find him. Well, we're still He's looking. We're not giving up. We're it. not giving up. We're not giving up. But, but hey, Bishop Bruce, uh, <laughs> I'll let you have the final thought, man. I got I got to go to my next calls. Well, as always, man. It's- I love listening to your show because it's just, you know, it's this. It's great sports talk show. I love it. It's uh, Alabama football. It's Alabama fan three. You have some of the finest guests uh, promoting some of the finest things in life. It's just a great honor to even be on your show. And uh, if you don't ever remember anything else after all the talk done, you can remember one thing. Nick Saban is and we'll be, and we are, the University of Alabama, and nobody will tell us what to do. Thank you, Biscuit Bruce. We appreciate that. 205-342-9904. Dawson, good afternoon. You're in the game. Ryan, hope you're doing well. Uh, busy, busy, but uh, it's a very uh, lively show today. Well, it should be, Ryan. It should be. This is a bombshell. And I'll, I'll tell you, Ryan, first of all, I forget who it was that called, and said he was so nervous and all this kind of crap. Listen, Coach Sabin, nor our football team, nor this university is going to be held hostage by anybody for any reason. And, uh, you know, it's something, and, and this business about Tua being fragile, there's nothing fragile about Tua. He has a broke finger. There's nothing fragile about that. And then he got up there and played with a broke finger and got it hurt again. I'd have had a shirt on and said, nobody touch him until that finger got well. But anyway, be that as it may, he's not fragile. Matter of fact, I think he came to this university known as a warrior. So let's just dismiss that notion right now. And whatever happens, whether Jalen stays or goes, we will be okay. And uh, But I wanted to go on to the next things I want to talk about, and that is this idea that uh, his son, that uh, uh, Jalen needs to be defended by his father. Now, I want to dismiss that notion. Okay. That's crazy. Do you, tell, do you think that Coach Saban has taken any kind of offense against Jalen? No, I do not. I mean, if anything, Nick Sibbett has been very patient with Jalen Okay, now let me ask you, do you think the players, his teammates, have taken any kind of action against him? Well, I mean, I, I, it depends on what you want to define as action. I mean, we, we know that there's frustration in that locker room. Well, but that's not against him. I mean, I think his teammates are for him, don't you? I mean, to the degree that that. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it. sure. Yeah, they are. So the, the the point I make is that there's no offense against him, so why does he need defense? Why does he need defending? He doesn't need defending. He's out there trying to win a position, and I, I want to endorse everything that my friend Biscuit Bruce had to say. Okay. Because he was right 100% on that. And uh, listen, Jaden has been treated fairly and given – 
every benefit of the doubt in every form and fashion. And we all know that he doesn't have that moxie. He doesn't have that extra that Tua has. And I think we can see why. I mean, it is outrageous for a father to get in the newspaper or on TV and talk about his son like that. Do you think that if I had a private conversation with my son that I would get on TV and in the newspaper and talk about it? Well, because, see, Dawson, here is what I'm saying. Knowing him as a coach, I think this was a calculated move. I don't think that this was just something out there. I mean, are you going to tell me a reporter from – Matt Hayes lives in Orlando. Matt Hayes went to Channel View, Texas to talk with his father. Do you not think Matt Hayes picked up the phone and said, hey, I'm coming to Channel View to talk to you. Will you talk to me? I think it was a calculated move. I don't think that this was just spur of the moment. Let me ask you a question. What kind of calculation, what kind of reasoning? I think it's drawing the the, the line in the sand and saying, hey, if you don't start my kid, he's going to transfer. Well, Ryan, if, if it is a line drawn in the sand, it is the stupidest line that has ever been drawn. Because if his son is capable of winning that job, then he'll win it. And he is a football coach, and he should understand that. I wonder if he entertains that kind of stuff from the parents of his players. Um, and and that's at a high school level. So if he thinks that Coach Saban is going to be held hostage by that, he just made the he just made the biggest mistake on his son's behalf that a father could make. Because his son is not a child, he's a man. He's treating him like a child instead of a man. Wouldn't you agree? Well, it's a helicopter parent. That that's what they call the millennials' parents. They Dawson and in our and I'm not saying you and I are close in generation. We're not. Uh, you got me by a few years, not many, but you got me by a, a few. whole lot of years, okay. like thirty. <laughs> but but I think the the one example is, you know, at eighteen, the our parents would push us out the door and wish us luck, right? Uh, you know, go get them. Uh, we, we, we still got, uh, we, we've got parents that are hanging on, uh, and, and not just this situation. I mean, it, it's, I mean, I mean, Dawson, if I told you there was parents that have to drive in three or four hours to do laundry for these kids, these freshmen over to Alabama, not, not football players, but just normal students, would you believe me? Yeah, I believe it, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really you, you need it. to, cause I, it I happens. Mean, I, I think it's outrageous, but I, I believe it. And, but just let me close out by just saying that. He did not do his son any favor. And I think that this is going to really uh, have steam from the standpoint of the way that everything is looked at um, in this quarterback battle. The players, the coaches, everything. And I and I have no doubt that it makes it tougher on Jalen to win that job if he was capable of winning, which I – Wing it, which I don't think well, he that, is. That, but. That, okay, forget about Dawson and, and Ryan and Red and Biscuit Bruce and Chris and all these great callers. What if a teammate reads this article? He walks up and says, um, hey, man, are you really going to bail out on us? I mean, if, if you don't win the job, are you going to bail out on us? Well, I'm going to go and record and I get out of here, okay? Okay. This is not Jalen's idea. No, I, I don't think it is either. I, I don't think Jaylen it is. Jalen had nothing to do with it. But you look you look at him after that game, you look at what he said the other day, and Ryan, you can rally around that kind of talk. If I ever once heard him say, You play me, play me or I'm leaving, I say, Get gone. Yeah, right. I, but he's not he has not been that kind of a person, Ryan. I totally agree. This no. is not this is not this is not Jalen Hurts. This is his father, and I think it kind of shows us why that there's that something that needs to come from deep inside of you is not there. Yeah. And because when a father will say, you effed up to your son, Ryan, I'm going to tell you something. I think it's outrageous. Roll tight, man. Thank you, Dawson. We appreciate you for being a part of the show. 205-342-9904. 
Uh, we have lined up, and we don't have a guest until 4.30, okay? We don't have a guest until 4.30. Phone lines have been a complete meltdown. We're talking, I mean, we've taken the Alabama-Notre Dame story, which is a contract that they did a home-and-home. In other words, we're going to South Bend, and they're coming to Tuscaloosa. But that is so far on the back page, that's a 28, 2028, 2029 season, a home-and-home series with Alabama and Notre Dame. That is so far off the main topic, even though it's a major story in college football, that these two powers, the blue bloods of college football, have hooked up. We've pushed that back. We had Nick Saban talking at 5.30, and it's all phone calls. Marquise Munson, uh, you still breathing over there? You okay? You okay? No, nah, I'm good, man. I'm the fastest hands in this business, dude. I got this. Okay. I mean, I mean, say nothing for me. I, this, I look, is slight, I, I, this is light work for me. Oh, th- oh, this is lightweight. Okay. Yeah, this is light work for me. Jason and Tuscaloosa hold through. I'm coming to you, David in Tampa. And all the other calls, we don't have any lines available, but write this number down for the future, 205-342-9904. The Game with Ryan Fowler, weekday afternoons from 2 until 6, only on Tide 1029 and 100.9.